In this segment, we're going to look at a very complicated um, statement and how to analyze it with a truth table. Um, in general, you should make column headings to list all the basic component statements first. And um, in another video, we talked about how uh, that's going to determine the number of scenarios or rows that you have to have in your in your truth table. Here is the complicated statement. It has several brackets and within it we have negation of P implies Q and negation of Q implies P and then that whole statement implies P or Q. So what do we list after we list the basic components? Well, first of all, the only two basic components are P and Q. So we have P in this column, which I'm calling column 1, and we have Q in column 2. I recommend that after you list the basic components, you list any negations of basic components that occur in the statement. In this case, we have two of them. The negation of P occurs and the negation of Q. So my next column heading I chose was negation of P in column 3 and negation of Q in column 4. That's how I decided on those columns. Next, I work within any parentheses. So going back up to my statement, you'll see that we have a set of parentheses containing negation P implies Q. I'm going to use that for my next column. And notice how the only new thing that I have in this column, column 5, is the arrow symbol, which is the implication, the if-then, the conditional. And the negation of P was already taken care of in a previous column. Next, going back to the original statement, I have some other parentheses. I'm working from the innermost parentheses first, leaving the brackets for later. The next set of parentheses has negation Q implies P. If not Q, then P. That's what I'm putting in column 6. Again, notice the negation of Q was already taken care of in another column. In column 6, the only new logic symbol we have to deal with is the arrow. Next, I decided to set up, and this is um, optional, I mean there's a certain amount of flexibility that you have, but I started with all the little sets of parentheses. So my next uh, column is P or Q, and that's column 7 here. And then, and in that column, what's the new logic symbol? The new logic symbol is the OR, right? and everything else is already, t it, P and Q themselves are listed in the first two columns. Alright, then I went back and I looked at these brackets here and I said within these brackets I've already listed all of what's in the first set of parentheses, all what's in the second. The only thing that we haven't addressed is this AND in the middle of the brackets. So if I were to write this whole section from the brackets, in column 8, I've considered every logic symbol in there except for that AND. And then lastly, I'm going to do this implication that is in the entire statement. We're going to write the whole statement. That's what we're looking to find the truth values of over here. And again, notice the only logic symbol that hasn't been written in some other column is the arrow in the middle here. So that's going to be the only logical um, question we have when we look at that column. All right, now, after we've written all of our column headings, then we're going to go back and fill in the truth values. Okay, column 3, we're going to use the truth values from column 1 because the negation of P is based only on the val truth values of the original component P. The original component P was true, true, false, false. Negations are the opposite, false, false, true, true. Next, in column 4, we need to fill in the truth values. Not Q is going to be the opposite of Q. So looking back at column 2, we see true, false, true, false. The opposite of that for not Q is going to be false, true, false, true. Now, in column 5, we have the conditional. And the conditional is the trickiest of, of the four rules that we need to know for our um, 
uh, truth tables. For the conditional, a conditional is only false if the first part is true but the second part is false. I like to think of it as the first part is saying making a promise. So if the first promise is made and then it's not fulfilled, we get a false statement, then the overall conditional is false. Now that means that we need to compare two columns. We need to compare the column containing the negation of P and the column containing Q. And what's really tricky about this is that they're not in the same order in our column headings as they ended up being in our conditional statement in column 5. So not P, which is on the right of the Q column, is our first part of our conditional statement. Q is the second part, which is to the left of it in our columns. So we need to remember that we're looking, our, our direction is from column 3 to column 2, and the only way it will be false is if the promise is made but broken. I just found an error on my table, but I fixed it. Okay, so um, looking at, again, column 5, not P implies Q, then from going from column 3 to column 2, we're going to look for the scenario where the not P is true, but the Q is false, and that happens only in the last row. So that's why in column 5 we have true, 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 false. The only false situation, again, where the promise was made but then broken, is in the last uh, row. Now on to column 6. Not Q implies P. Similar situation. We're going to be comparing the not Q column, which is column 4, with the P column, which is column 1. So we're looking for the situation where not Q is true, like here in the second row, but P is false. Well, P is still true in the second row, so that's not going to cause a false. But here in the last row, again, not Q is true, but P is false. So the promise was made but broken. So in the sixth column, we're going to have the only false value in the last row. Next, we wanted to look at P or Q in the seventh column. Now, the rule for an OR statement is that an OR statement is only false if both components are false. And looking at P or Q means we're going to refer back to the first two columns. And where are they both false? Only in the last row. So the statement P or Q is only going to be false, again, in the last row. True, 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 false. Next, column 8, we're looking at the AND statement that's made up of the two conditionals we've already analyzed. So we're comparing column 5 and column 6 using the AND rule, which is that it statement is only, an AND statement is only true if both components are true. So let's see how we did here. True and true is true. True and true is true. True and true is true. And then in the last, they're both false, so definitely false on the and. And then in our last column, which is the entire statement we were trying to analyze, the only new part is the conditional, the arrow. And the first part of the conditional was analyzed in column 8. And the last part, the P or Q, is in column 7. So we want to know when is the promise made but broken. That would mean there's a true in column 8 and simultaneously a false in column 7. Well, that doesn't happen here. All of the truth values are the same. So that means that all of the rows in our final column have a true truth value. And by the way, when all of the uh, columns are in a conditional, are, um, uh, excuse me, when all of the rows in our final statement are true, 
and that would also be called a tautology. And that concludes this exercise.